Mississippi's cresting almost a foot higher than the experts predicted. We'll show you a city levy that couldn't take it. Another that's in danger of doing the same. A third evacuation order goes out this morning. It's everything thousands of tourists drove here to see. And Monsanto makes a million dollar commitment. But first, the levy that couldn't handle the water. It's the first levy to fail in the city of St. Louis. Less than two hours after the evacuation order went out, so did the levy at Alabama and Marceau on the River De Pere. No injuries, but a steadily rising tide of river water is taking over the streets and buildings. St. Louis 11's Victor Ojeda has a story. Water streams from the River De Pere. Residents hoped against hope that the levee would hold, but it didn't. Their cars and homes were swallowed up in a matter of hours. Eyewitnesses say the levee sounded like a sonic boom when it finally blew. Big wall, wall of water. They finally told me to get out, so I grabbed what I could, grabbed the dog and bag of clothes and started walking, got out of here. When I woke up, my cousin came down here and said he'd seen, that, seen it break, actually break, right behind, the house, right behind my house. You can see the water inching its way forward, but for some homeowners, it's already a lost cause. <laughs> Geraldine Kintzer and Sandy Hayes have been next door neighbors for 20 years. Before the levee broke this morning, their homes were dry. Now they join the ranks of the hundreds of other flood victims. I'm not going to live here anymore, that's for sure. This is twice I've gone through it, and it's too nerve-wracking. I think it's completely ruined. I think um, it's up to the awnings. I don't know how much damage is in there, but I'm sure there's quite a bit. Officials say today's break may be a sign of things to come. The levee has weakened many other places, and the Mississippi continues to push the river to pair inward and outward. Still, rescue crews expect some hard-headed residents to stay put. Some of them are a little stubborn, but I think once they see this water really come up, they're going to start to get out of here. And late tonight, there apparently have been four more breaks along the levee, along the river to pair a heavy downpour of rain. is just causing a lot of havoc. And there's been a call for sandbaggers at Carondelet and Tesson. That's also in South St. Louis. The levee there is apparently very weak, so they need sandbaggers. Reporting from the newsroom, I'm Victor Ojeda. Thanks, Victor. The huge levee break sent wildlife swimming for their lives. Check out this snake. It seems to take a breather from the strong waters, then dives back in, disappearing out of view. Tonight, police have shut down the Morgan Ford Bridge. That's off Germania in South St. Louis. The levee breach has sent some water on the bridge, although it's not very deep. Authorities say there could be the potential for an accident. Only emergency vehicles are being allowed. If you wanted to get to West Alton today, the only way, by boat. Look at the flooded intersection of 367 and 94. In fact, 94 is completely submerged. With the record crest, some homes are swallowed up. Others are getting that way as the water inches higher. And as you see, the area is deserted. To North County, where a man-made sandbag levee appears to be buckling. When this picture was taken this morning in the Laramore area off Priggy Road, just one house had been lost. It seemed the sandbaggers might have been winning. The sandbag wall was eight feet high, but the water was climbing fast. On the ground, volunteers were sandbagging madly there this morning. 75 volunteers working to save five homes in the area. But as the water kept climbing and seeping through, county police started worrying the eight-foot wall wouldn't hold. So late today, they forced all volunteers to give up and get out for safety. Ray Ackerman is angry. He's been working four days to save a friend's home. Could have saved these people's homes. They made us pull our pumps out because if we could have kept our pumps going, we believe we could have kept ahead of it because this wall ain't going nowhere. Because the people from the Corps Engineers guy was down here and said this is a very well-built levee. The order left homeowners feeling frustrated and hopeless, feeling like they'll lose the battle. This afternoon, homeowners along Germania and South St. Louis got quite a scare. The levee in the 3900 block along the River de Pere gives way, forcing many to give up their vigil and get out. The immense force along the swollen River de Pere was just too much for this sandbag levee to handle. It crumbled late this afternoon, turning Germania Street into a river. Just a passing truck creates a wake, sending an outhouse downstream. They have no business coming down here through here that fast. And though he's waiting in his front yard, Bill Toth is not leaving. We're scared to leave like uh, everybody else around here is scared of looters and stuff. That's the reason we're staying as long as we can. We're just trying to protect what, what's ours, you know. The levee break was patched, but it's seeping and weak. It depends on how bad the sandbag wall is leaking and how bad the drainage structures are leaking inside that area. The water is pooling into front yards. For most, it's simply unbelievable. One in 73, they had the flood wall build up over here. As you can see, it's over it now. And uh, 
it's a lot worse. I can't believe it. I'm down here taking pictures myself. MSD works to pump the water back in. It's water mixed with raw sewage, but with all these leaks, it appears they may lose the battle. The brunt of the water is rising. Uh, you know, keep the current and the heavy push down. So Gerald Gannon isn't taking any chances. He's already moved out. You can actually, if you stand here and watch it for a few minutes, you'll actually see it's going higher and higher by the minute. Now, city emergency managers tell us the situation along the River De Pere is getting desperate tonight. Four more breaks have been reported. As we've already told you, today's crest is a lot higher than the National Weather Service predicted. To be exact, it's almost a foot higher. By midnight tonight, the Mississippi will have crested at 47 feet. That's nine-tenths of a foot higher than expected. But the good news is the fall may begin soon. The experts think that the Mississippi will start going down for the first time in weeks beginning late Monday night. The Missouri River in St. Charles County has grounded flights at St. Charles Airport. This is the view from the sky over the airport. Several levee breaks along the Missouri River have sent water gushing over most of the area. Some of the waters are covering parts of several planes that were stored at the airport. In Grafton, Illinois, the waters have actually receded a couple of inches in the last hour, but that's no guarantee what the future holds. Still, most of the town is underwater. Flood waters coming up to the rooftops of some homes. Tons of gravel had to be dumped in one area to create a road so people could travel on it, but so far, the road has remained dry. And this was the view over Winfield, Missouri today. Right now, the Mississippi River is at 13 feet above flood stage there. It's not expected to go any higher, but there could be more rain to the north. So far, the damage has been severe enough. Most of the town is covered with water. Acres of farmland have been flooded out. All of this flooding has piqued a lot of interest across the country. In fact, today the arch grounds were packed with visitors trying to get a peek at history in the making. Even along the riverfront today, hundreds of visitors swarming the arch grounds. Traffic was backed up for miles and parking was scarce. But that didn't keep people from driving hundreds of miles with their cameras, camcorders, children, and grandchildren. We're down here just to look at the flood. Yeah. I was here in 1973. I'm comparing it to the 1973 level. I can't go look at the flood. What do you got with you? A camera to take some pictures. Why is that? To see how, so I can see how high the flood water is. We think this is history and we just want to have it recorded for our children and our grandchildren. Not all areas welcome sightseers. In fact, the St. Louis Riverfront is the only place where authorities won't chase you away. In every other flooded area, authorities are telling would-be picture takers to get out. That's because extra traffic in flooded out areas can slow or even prevent some of the much needed help from getting to the people who need it. Authorities also want people to stay away from the waters for their own safety. One of the largest corporate contributions made during this crisis came today. The Monsanto Company donated $1 million to the American Red Cross. Monsanto will also match up to another million dollars in donations made by others. The gift will help meet emergency needs in agriculture areas devastated by the floods. The floods putting a massive strain on middle America's transportation. At the top of the list of troubles, bridges closed across the Mississippi. Tonight, the Clark Bridge in Alton, Illinois, was closed for about an hour, but at this moment, it is open to traffic. And further south, the bridge in Chester is now closed. That's creating a bottleneck in St. Louis with trucks and trains all being routed through here to get across the river. At the top of this newscast, we showed you the first levee break in the city of St. Louis. Now let's go back to a couple of hours before the levee went down, when police ordered the immediate evacuations of hundreds of families along the River to Pair. Among the areas cleared out, Germania from Morgan Ford to Alabama, Marceau from Alabama to Virginia, Carondelet from I-55 to Weber Road, and the Comstock Waddell area. I don't want to panic anyone, but by the same token, uh, there's a very distinct possibility that a breach can be made in the levee. Uh, once that's made, uh, it will be most difficult for evacuations to be made once there is flooding. Police told the families that they had two hours to get out and no one would be allowed back in. St. Louis 11's John Sheezer was in the area and reports that many of the families had had it up to here with the floods. Devastated, exhausted, overheated, and overwhelmed by the flooding, hundreds of residents were forced from their homes. They just issued this about 15 minutes ago. Many of these residents were surprised by the announcement and seemed somewhat confused. I think it's an irrational order by competent people. 
Many of the residents who live in this neighborhood have been without electricity now for more than six days. Some say they would not leave then, and they are not leaving now. Do you think it's maybe they just want to be safe rather than sorry and there's just extra precaution? No, I think they overreacted and they don't know what they're doing. That's what I think. And you're not leaving off the street? No, sir. On this street, about half of the families had fled earlier this week, but many wanted to stay as long as they could. Well, we just can't stand the heat no more. I got asthma, and at night it's just rough. It's hard staying here in, in this kind of heat. And just one block from Benoit's home tells the story. Here's the levee that was supposed to protect these families. This was the water seeping through before noon, and it was only expected to get worse. This flyer, saying the situation is critical and everyone should leave immediately, was put on everyone's door. And every resident was warned, but some said they knew better than those making the decisions. John Schuser, St. Louis 11 News. Now we had some thunderstorms and some heavy rain roll through our area late today. What's this mean for us and for the flood situation? Mark Furry is standing by live to let us know. Mark. Well, Karen, I'll tell you what. We did have a line of showers move through our area. And as it came through this afternoon, until about the 7 o'clock hour, we had about a trace at Lambert Field. There are some heavier amounts, of course, as that line moved through our area. Taking a look at radar, you can see right now that it is well off to our east, and we really shouldn't see any redevelopment of showers and thunderstorms overnight. Now, that is well in advance of a cold front that will be moving through the area tomorrow. Um, as I said, just a trace in the area as of 7 o'clock, but we did indeed get more than that. Now, the problem, of course, is that as this cold front moves through our all, all the warm, moist, humid air that we're having in our region, it's going to drop a lot more rain through the next 24 hours, particularly up to the north of us. And when it does that, of course, we're not going to see these river levels fall very much. We'll have your complete details coming up a little bit later on in weather. I'm Mark Green, the Weather Center. Thanks, Mark. We're going to go live to the waterfront for an update on the still rising river when we come back. In Iowa, the floods are going down, but so is the drinking water. More and we have Charles Ewey standing by live at the St. Louis Riverfront for an update. Charles, the river crest is now expected to be about 47 feet, as we mentioned. That's almost a foot higher than anyone expected. Is there any sign that this prediction could be wrong? Well, it, it doesn't look like it right now. We had a tremendous thunderstorm go through here earlier in the evening, and the river is still swirling past. But there are no indications that uh, it's going to be higher than that. Uh, from talking to the Corps of Engineers chief hydrologist earlier in the day today, he indicated that rain in this area would not necessarily be a big problem. It's the rain that falls uh, upriver in Iowa, Illinois, and Minnesota, Wisconsin. That poses a real big danger. And, of course, the long-range weather forecast is for the same type of weather we've been having for a long time. More rain, more thunderstorms, more water. Charles, you've been up and down the Mississippi reporting us since the, we're reporting for us since the flood crisis began, but tonight it's St. Louis's turn to get hurt. How does our hurt compare to the other communities that you've seen? Well, I think there's a little bit more of a, of a desperate edge to this, if I can use that, uh, that phrase. Uh, what happened in the, along the River de Pair today, when the levee suddenly broke and people were running for it, uh, piling what they could into their cars and trucks and whatever they could carry out of there, that was really a desperate scene. We were right in the middle of all of that today, and as the water just kept pouring in, I think some people were standing there incredulous at it all, and it was a different scene from what was going on in other little towns, uh, where the fight was going on to prevent the river from breaking in, and then again in some other little communities where people had resigned themselves to put up with whatever the river was going to deal them and their towns were underwater and there was nothing they could do about it. So we've seen a number of different pictures of Missourians and uh, uh, residents of Illinois fighting this flood. St. Louis, however, has given us a different edge, a, a more urgent edge to this story. Okay, thanks. Charles Zewe reporting live from the St. Louis Riverfront. Well, more bad news for the people of Des Moines today. Heavy rains pounded the region again. Meanwhile, testing of the city's water system is on hold. That means it will be at least a week before there's running water, and it'll be another month before it's safe to drink. Stay with us. More up to the pair. The latest one happened around 745 tonight at Germania and Prim. There's also a break reported at Germania and Stoll. A breach is reported at Carondelet and Tesson. Another break is reported at Morgan Ford and Tesson. That, along with the Alabama Marceau break, makes four in all, plus the breach. And at Germania and 55, the water is uh, expected to breach sometime tonight. Reporting live from the newsroom, I'm Victor Ojeda. Thanks, Victor. And that wraps a special edition of St. Louis 11 News. Thanks for joining us. To 10 feet deep by midnight. Already, some streets have buckled and water mains have broken. Officials are sealing off the area to keep away looters and to keep sightseers away from danger. And if a breach occurs while someone's walking a baby down there sightseeing and the levee breaks there, it'll drown sure. 
not only is there danger for the sightseers, but also the people who remain here. The uh, alderman from this ward told me that he's suggesting people who have had contact with the water get shots. And you can do that tomorrow at the Family Care Center that is located on Michigan. The chief, uh, the fire chief also says there has to be six feet inching higher and higher with each passing moment. The high water is threatening the Lewis and Clark Bridge. It's open at this moment, but around 7 o'clock tonight, the Missouri Highway Patrol closed that bridge down. They were worried that the water would come over the approach on the Missouri side, so they shut down the bridge, they brought in sandbags, shored up the approach, and that work was completed in about one hour. The bridge was then opened from Missouri in to into Alton at around 8 o'clock. And the Highway Patrol, by the way, feels that the bridge is safe at this point. They say they will not need to close the bridge anymore from this point on. Now, do you remember that here on the riverfront, there is actually a railroad track that's running beneath me. It starts as a tunnel underneath the arch grounds on the north end. It ends right behind me on the south end. What does it look like today? There it is for you. That rail tunnel is better now suited for using a boat than a train. The train traffic was shut down about a week ago because there was already water on that track. But now the water is coming up over the top of that tunnel and going into it. Just another prime example of the high water on the Mississippi on the riverfront is getting higher. Now, another result of the flooding is buckling streets. Now, this is the scene in the 8500 block of North Broadway. The two inside lanes buckle. We're not positive about the reason. We are told that it could be a combination of heat and floodwaters that caused this street to buckle. Police shut down and barricaded off the middle two lanes. You can still drive on the outside two lanes. There was another street to buckle in the flood area. It was near the River de Pair. It's in the area of Germania and Prim. The street sank there because of a water main break. It was caused by flooding in that area. Well, it takes a lot of dramatic pictures to tell the story, but standing in front of me, I guesstimate to have about 150 to 200 people. They are families mostly, all of them sitting quietly on the steps or what's left of the grand staircase at the Gateway Arch. They're just sitting here quietly looking at the water. It's very interesting to them because, Julius and Larry, it would be interesting to you, as I'm sure you've seen. This is just another prime example of the rising waters and people wondering how much higher they're going to go. Thank you very much, uh, Robin. And the, the uh, Mississippi River, in addition to being mysterious and, and muddy and murky and, and all, and mighty, is also mesmerizing. That's another M for us. As we have seen when we were down there, people just sitting and staring at the incredible sight of this water rising. Monday, when we began our expanded 6 o'clock broadcast down there, you remember the floodwaters at that point were less mm -hmm. than 42 feet, right. almost four and a half feet higher mm -hmm. in this last seven days. Meanwhile, the against raging rivers is here just south of Hardin, Illinois. The Illinois River blew a hole through the Nutwood levee. One week ago today, residents frantically threw sandbags on top of this levee, but nothing could hold back this river. Farmland, homes, and hopes are quickly swallowed up as the river flexes its muscle. In Grafton, floodwaters continue to fill the small tourist community, homes and businesses destroyed by the river. Residents in Alton still wage a battle against the Mississippi. A huge sandbag operation is underway right behind the ConAgra plant. The Alton Bell, meanwhile, is losing parking space, but not hope. Customers continue to hop aboard. North St. Louis County near Bell Fountain neighbors looks like many communities. The river takes over sections of road. In St. Genevieve, another huge sandbag operation. Volunteers have been scrambling to save historic homes. The river already occupies dozens of other houses. And in Chester, Illinois, the only bridge leading folks to Kaskaskia Island is now closed. Water clogs lanes. In the background, the Chester prison is surrounded by water. Everyone everywhere along the rivers continue the tireless attempts to save levees. But that is proving to be extremely difficult. Only a few hours after this levee broke, the size of the hole doubled. Heidi Deja, News 4. At least at one time, clearly came together, but obviously those boundaries are no longer quite as distinct, and underneath all that water is a great deal of tragedy, I'm afraid. As far as good news, while you have to be a little bit encouraged by this picture, we're expecting some severe weather tomorrow afternoon. I know that's a bit of a stretch, but the good news is we're not expecting strong thunderstorms. Now, nothing but tributaries into a never-ending lake. And this is what she saw when she got to her home. Nothing in here yesterday. I thought I had it made, but no, guess not. Kathleen has lived here for 32 years. Like just about everyone else around here, she's never seen the water this high. Reluctantly, this time, she took precautions, moving all the important things onto blocks. Now she's glad she did. 
Is it high enough, Jim? While Kathleen is better off than many of her neighbors, she says the river has gotten the best of her. I know I'm not staying. I've made up my mind to that. I don't know where I'm going, but I'll find a place. This was terrible. I did not expect it. I'm ready to get out of here. Thousands of residents throughout this region, not just counting across the Midwest, will be going through the same thing that Kathleen Edler went through today. Isn't that heartbreaking? It is. Water, but there were no other injuries reported. The death toll from the flood now stands at 29 in nine states. An inch, all of which fell in the span of 20 minutes. Now, the precipitation, it didn't bring us additional flooding, and it wasn't severe but it was definitely on the noticeable side. Feeding a fire for these storms. Partly cloudy overnight with a low in the upper 70s.